from Chef Travels, I'm Kevin Harrington. Today we are cooking another classic British dish. Um, there are a lot of different recipes for this dish. Today I'm going to give you my take on fisherman's pie. So without further ado, let's get you short on the road. So the ingredients we're using today, um, I've got some diced coli and some diced fresh salmon which I've boned and skinned, some sliced potatoes, a mixture of cherry tomatoes and cucumber, some fresh leaf salad, some spinach, some sliced spring onions, some feta and some Edam uh, cheddar cheese, some plain flour, half pound of butter, some fresh milk, salt and pepper, fresh cream, and in this pot I've put the bones and skin of the fish that I'm using today, which I'm going to show you later, and we're going to make a stock with that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got the bones and the skin from the fish that I've trimmed off. Um, don't worry if you don't have this, just ask your uh, fishmonger for some and to be honest with you, if you don't use it, it won't make all that much difference because uh, I'm just using it because I love to keep all the flavours. Um, into that, I'm going to pour some milk, about a pint, pint and a half. I'm just going to put two pieces of butter. And what I'm going to do basically is put it on the back burner and let that cook on a, on a low heat just to infuse all the flavours basically. It's, it's pretty much a, um, like a fish stock. Um, and obviously I'm gonna strain that later and use the milk to make the sauce with. In the pan, put about half pound of butter. There are a lot of takes on this dish. Um, it's a traditional old fisherman's dish um, made with basically any leftovers that have uh, come ashore and the uh, fisherman's wife would knock them together. You can put whatever you want into this uh, this dish. You, oh, I'm going to use salmon, fresh salmon and coli today because pretty much that was what was available to me. I'd love to put some king corns in it as well, but um, basically they didn't have any. So I'm using what I've got, which is pretty much what they would have done as well, using anything you want. You can put anything you want in. Um, one thing I will say about this dish is fish is delicate, so you don't really want to overcook it. Try and keep it um, as simple as possible. So the butter's melted away there, in goes the flour. And what we're doing here is basically making a little roux. Now we don't want to colour this at all, we just want to basically cook the flour out. Um, all the um, measurements and uh, ingredients to this recipe are on the link below. So if you want to click on the link below, um, give us a cheeky little thumbs up or subscribe, it will be appreciated. So there you have it, that's our roux. And what we want to do just cook that flour out. You don't want to colour it because that's going to give the dish a different flavour which we don't really want. But we also don't want that floury, glutiny taste. Hence the reason we make a roux. Sort of like a biscuity texture. What we're going to do is we're going to start incorporating our milk. It's important to have your milk hot. It um, helps it mix in and get a smoother texture as well. Don't add it all at once, just add it a little bit at a time. Keeping the bones and skin out of it. At a later stage you can add colder milk, but to begin with, I always find it best to add warm milk, hot milk, warm milk. Um, it tends to bring it together a lot quicker and a lot better, as you can see. So that's looking good. Absolutely fantastic. That's about the right texture we want. Maybe just a little bit more milk. As I say, you don't want the bones in there, you don't want the skin in there. Now 
basically making a nice white sauce. And this is a very simple dish, um, nothing complicated about it. Right, that's our sauce pretty much up to standard. I don't want it too thin because um, the juices from the fish are going to moisten it down a bit and also I'm going to be adding cream to it. So at this stage, what we're going to put in, we're going to add all our ingredients. Well, the ingredients for the fish pie anyway. So that all goes in there like that. Turn it down a little bit. And I'm not really going to cook all this fish out because it's going in the oven um, and it's going to carry on cooking in the oven, obviously. But a little twist I'm putting on it today is I'm using some feta cheese because I find it's got a lovely creamy texture it adds to the dish and the flavour also um, complements the dish quite. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some cream. So as you can see, um, when the cream goes in, again, it loosens it up a bit so you haven't got uh, a completely thick sauce. Now at this stage, you don't want to play around with it too much because we want to try and keep um, pieces of fish whole as much as possible. Add salt. I'm using this fantastic crystal salt. It's really got a lovely flavour. And also, it's better than your um, average table salt. It's supposed to be healthier for you. How true that is, I don't know. I'm not a chemist, I'm not a doctor. But I do go with flavour. And I know that it has got a much better flavour than table salt. So as you can see, um, that's pretty much our fish done. I'm going to add a little bit more milk to that because I don't want it too dry. As I say, there's no set um, recipes for this dish. There's a lot of different combinations. This is my take on it. I love this recipe. You've got the full flavour of the fish plus uh, the spring onions and I'm also going to put feta cheese with it. So at this stage spinach goes in give that a little mix in might look like a lot of spinach but don't worry about it because it is going to break down to practically nothing at the end of the end of the cooking process and again you don't want to cook all this too much just enough then in goes our feta cheese and we incorporate that as well and that is that part of the dish done And that's about enough for that dish. Don't want to fill it up too much because don't forget we're going to have the potato on top of it as well. Here I've got a pot of boiling water on. And into that I'm going to put my sliced potatoes. Now the reason I've sliced the potatoes is because um, I don't want lumpy mashed potato. And the reason you get lumpy mashed potato is basically because what happens is when you put the potatoes in too chunky, big whole pieces of tomato of potato, it doesn't cook in the middle. So when you come to mashing it, that little bit in the middle stays uncooked and doesn't break down, and that's how you get lumpy mashed potato. So by slicing the potatoes, you're doing two things. You're getting all the bits cooked and also getting rid of a lot of the starch as well which makes gluten in mashed potatoes which you really don't want. So the potatoes have been boiling away for about half hour just get a fork give them a little prick just to make sure that they are actually cooked and um, the next phase drain the water off. Turn the gas down 
what we want to do, add the butter, add some milk, seasoning of course, Again, you don't want to season it too much because you've got feta cheese in the um, in this dish, and that's got plenty of salt as it is. Plus, you've already seasoned the fish as well, the, the dish as well already. So, use your um, use your own judgment. Decide how much you want in there. Give that a little stirring. Get yourself a masher and mash it all down so that's all been mashed nicely and what we're going to do you can use a piping bag if you like i just like to use a spoon put it on the corners first it's just what i've always done and you don't want it all seeping out the edges so that's why i put it down the edges first get that bit covered goes on there like that. As I say you don't want this mash too runny but you also don't want it too dry because if you have it too dry it's going to be too heavy. And when you go to put it on the dish it will squeeze all the sauce out of the dish which you don't really want. Get yourself a little fork, just give it a little bit of a pat down like that. The next thing we're going to do is grate some cheese on it. So I've got some cheddar cheese, mature cheddar cheese here and we're just going to give it a lovely little bit of grating on top and that is now ready to go into a preheated oven at 180 degrees centigrade and we're going to let that cook for approximately about another half hour to 45 minutes so after about 45 minutes 30 minutes to 45 minutes at one gas mark 180 degrees centigrade fisherman's pie is good to come out and there you have it fisherman's pie and so as they say the proof is in the pudding what I'm going to do a little bit of salad dressing on the salad beautiful look at that absolutely gorgeous grab myself a little spoon and fork and hey pronto that is divine definitely a recipe worth following and definitely one for the captain's table I'm Kevin Harrington thanks for joining me on Chef Travels See you on the next mission.